Thank you, Sakina, and thank you so much uh, for having me today. And um, yeah, I guess uh, the, the reason I'm here is because I'm talking about the work that Human Rights Watch has done, um, looking at how China undermines academic freedom globally. And this um, uh, resulted in a report that we put out last year called They Don't Understand the Fear We Have, um, examining China's long arm um, of influence and how it undermines academic freedom. So basically, Human Rights Watch has been working on these issues um, for several years. So even before I joined the organization, because I'm quite a new, new hire. Um, but in 2019, we, we put out a code of conduct because we began to um, really examine what was happening around the world with the CCP's efforts to influence um, academic freedom in a whole range of countries. We interviewed more than 100 academics and students across the world to develop this code of conduct. And what we found is that basically, the university sector globally was unprepared um, to address in any kind of systemic way um, these concerted efforts by the Chinese government. We took that code of conduct at the time to uh, universities in Australia, in the US and the UK, and universities assured us that this wasn't an issue, that there was nothing to worry about, that there was no evidence of any harassment, intimidation or threats um, to their staff or students, um, and basically yeah, denied that, that um, uh, foreign interference on their campuses was happening. So we decided that um, it would be good to do a you know, proper in-depth report. You know, that's what Human Rights Watch is, is known for. And um, it was actually the first report that I that I wrote for the organization. In 2020 and you know the beginning of 2021, um, for those not, not in Australia, I'll just paint you a little picture of what was happening here. We there was a you know a lot of debate about CCP foreign interference um and a, a lot of scrutiny of the university sector, but it was a lot, it was often looking at things through a national security lens, um, which is valid. But for us as a human rights organization, we felt that that's what was missing from the debate. You know, the heart and soul of the um, university sector is the students and the staff. And they weren't part of these discussions about foreign interference. It was all about, you know, talent programs and research partnerships with state-run entities and dual-use technology, but no mention of the actual people at the heart of this and how their rights were being threatened and undermined. So, we set out to collect as much evidence as we could. You know, I did um, nearly 50 interviews uh, of students and staff working in Australian universities, uh, 17 universities all up in six state and territories across Australia. And what, what we found, the, the evidence um, of how the CCP is trying to influence academic freedom in this country was really disturbing. Um, you know, we, we basically found that um, pro-democracy students uh, were being, uh, had to alter their behaviour, they had to self-censor in, in class because of this threat of being reported on from their fellow classmates um, to authorities back home. We found that more than half of the academic staff that we interviewed said that they practiced regular self-censorship when talking about China um, and that how to discuss China had become a major issue in their professional lives. So there were fears of nationalistic students recording and uh, their class discussions, uploading them and then becoming, you know, the, the focus of, of doxing attacks. That was something that was a, a clear trend with the academics that we interviewed. Um, what was really disturbing was that the students who did receive threats, they didn't report it to their universities because they didn't feel that their universities would take these threats seriously or that they were on their side. You know, they felt that the Australian university sector was going to be more sympathetic to nationalistic Chinese students. Um, sorry, just the interruption there. Um, and that um, the university would give priority to maintaining their relationship with the Chinese government um, rather than standing up for them when these issues kind of came to the forefront. And everyone that we interviewed um, across those 17 universities had said that this had gotten worse in recent years. Um, really alarmingly, we verified three cases of students in which the police in China had, had visited or asked to meet with their families as a direct result of that student's activities while they were studying in Australia. Um, and one student had, had even been threatened with jail after they came to Australia to study and opened a Twitter account and posted pro-democracy messages. Um, and another student who had expressed support for democracy in front of his classmates in Australia had his um, uh, yeah, passport confiscated um, by Chinese authorities upon returning home. We also verified an incident where a, 
an academic teaching in Australia um, was harassed to such an extent because of comments she made about Taiwan um, that the university had to take down her contact details from their website. So, you know, a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, um, a lot of impact on people's daily lives and the universities um, weren't doing anything about it. Um, so what, what we did is we actually... Um, worked really closely with the sector as soon as we came up with this evidence and we could see how strong it was we worked with them to come up with these recommendations um, of really practical steps that they can take to to protect students academic freedom we worked with the home affairs department in australia who have a um, working group which works across the intelligence agencies the education department and the home affairs department and they adopted some of our recommendations in terms of how to protect students and staff and we also gave evidence to a parliamentary committee that was examining these issues and they took on board some of our recommendations as well, um, which we were really pleased with. And I can go into that more in the questions of the exact kind of concrete steps that we are recommending. But um, just quickly in summary, because I know we're going to try and keep it tight. Um, we, we are looking at these issues around the world. This has been live on campuses um, in the past week. We've seen it happening. Uh, students putting up posters, universities taking them down, a lot of conflict. This is a really important area. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, there's a lot of duty of care issues that the universities have. And it's a it's a great way to remind people that at the heart of these, you know, debates about foreign interference, it comes down to people's rights and, and what we need to do to protect them. So I'll end there and I'll, yeah, I can answer questions later about any specifics. Thank you.